sands of time run endlessly. Throughout the ages, yellow rock has frowned over the entrance to the valleys of the Wollombi Brook. Thousands of feet, black and white, have trudged the tracks below this mountain, and pages in the history of man in Australia have been written in the shadow of yellow rock. Erosion has crumbled the yellow sandstone face and worn deep gorges in the ranges from which Wallumbi Brook flows out to join the Hunter River. The dead stream banks fall to feed the sea of sand. More than a century ago, the many roads along the creeks were busy with the passing parade. Through the rocky hills, the weary convicts toiled to build the Great North Road. Clergymen rode by. Bullock drays moved slowly northwards. And coaches rolled along carrying the squatters, the new settlers, the entertainers, the merchants, the flotsam and jetsam of the old colonial days. Now the roads are mostly silent and deserted, and the hand of time lies heavily on the Wallumbi as traffic travels north and south by new routes. The old staging houses are in ruins, and life has ebbed from the land. have closed, and the children are few indeed. and laughed in the fields and valleys, who picnicked at Lemon Tree Gully and climbed yellow rock to find the wildflowers of these rugged hills. Have they gone forever? For those who have stayed on the Wallumbi, the past and the present have merged into one. In this home, built by a settler of long ago, lives a family with roots deep in the soil. They look forward to the future with confidence and courage. For most of the old hands, the passing of time has meant work and hardship. Their faith has never failed. The coming of spring is marked by a new surge of life. Warmth and color flow through the land.
Like the coming of spring, the surge of interest in the Wallenbier and its problems, stirred by the Hunter Valley Research Foundation, has brought a new kind of life to the highways and byways of the catchment. Research to directly aid an ailing area will be of value throughout the rest of our country. A forgotten region is now in the thoughts of people in many parts of Australia. Research workers are investigating flooding and flood forecasting, the existing land use and its possible improvement, the washout of stream banks and the decay of the hills. In these projects, Commonwealth and state government departments are playing a vital part. At the same time, they are vigorously pressing forward with their own investigations and remedial projects. The 700 square miles of the Wallenby catchment are a living laboratory and a miniature of much of the whole of the Great Hunter Valley. Everywhere, citizens are preparing to back the attack. The field plan of the Hydrology Committee of the Research Foundation provides for three gauging and height stations like this one, installed by the New South Wales Water Conservation and Irrigation Commission below Payne's Crossing. Others are located near Cedar Creek and at Bulgar. Pluviometers, which are automatic rain gauges, are being set up in many places. A network of standard rain gauges spreads over the catchment. Instruments have been provided by the Commonwealth Bureau of Meteorology, the Water Conservation and Irrigation Commission, and the University of New South Wales. Installation and maintenance are often difficult and hazardous. But courage and determination started the research, and the same spirit keeps it going, no matter how hard the work may be. From the records provided by these instruments, the full story of flooding in this stream will be unfolded. Valuable data is being assembled, which will have a direct bearing on the building of a dam at Walkwood, near the point where the brook joins the Hunter. This is the first large-scale hydrological project of its kind in the Hunter Valley. Each new instrument is a symbol of the onward march of research. Many of the instruments are cared for by local residents who show a keen interest in the efforts of the Foundation to help them. A land use survey has been completed and a report published by the Foundation. Carefully and patiently, the field work of many agencies goes on in this attack on the problems of the Wallenby. Great rainstorms over the catchment and the terrible droughts have scarred the land. Winter floods from the Wallenby have caused much damage in Singleton and Maitland. In the wet years from 1949 to 1955, the hills themselves began to slump through saturation. Wallenby Township became a focal point of the rapid physical changes which began to occur in the area. Wallenby was the scene of a record flood in 1949. During a dark winter night, the waters rose and filled many of the houses of the township and swirled as never before through the old church. 
but the stone blocks cut by man from these hills still stand firm against the ravages of time. This is the junction of the north and south arms of the brook near Wallamby Township. Long stretches of the south arm are in good condition with firm banks and deep pools in the watercourse. These pools have withstood many searing droughts and raging floods. Much of the north arm is eroded and filled with sand. The headwaters rise in deserted swamps and lagoons at Ellalong. Investigations by several agencies, including the Water Conservation and Irrigation Commission, have uncovered reasons for stream bank deterioration. It is largely due to increased velocity in the stream during floods. Once erosion starts at a weak point, a vicious circle begins. Erosion allows greater velocity. Greater velocity causes more erosion. Planned impediments to the swift flow of water will help to check the collapse of the banks. For this reason, willow trees are being extensively planted along the north arm. Work for control and restoration is carried out by the Water Conservation and Irrigation Commission of New South Wales. Concrete blocks anchor barricades of brushwood behind which debris collects to form new banks. Back in the hills, the rocks are crumbling under the assault of wind, rain, frost and fire. Even insects are at work helping the destruction. Geologists of the New South Wales Department of Mines have discovered that the solitary or banded bee bores into the defaced sandstone, speeding the erosion. The economic decline of this whole catchment during the last 70 years has been dramatic, due not only to the work of man and nature, but also because the march of time has bypassed the landlocked valleys. In the pioneering days of a century ago, this was a well-settled and prosperous community. Now most of the small settlers have gone, and only cattle and wild animals live in the deserted hills and valleys.
In good seasons, the rich land yields bountiful production. Droughts and floods bring hard times, and always there is the flowing sand, symbol of decay and despair. The future of much of the Wollombi is uncertain. What is to become of this historic region and its people? What does time hold for these children of the village of Broke as they grow up at the foot of Yellow Rock? Will they leave the land for the nearby coal fields, or drift like the sand towards the cities of the coast? Research is now our greatest ally in the fight against the relentless erosion of time. We've told the story of the Wallambi and of its children. Unless we move quickly to trace the causes of troubles which beset our valley, this story may be told again and again in the future. The Hunter Valley Research Foundation is leading an attack on the problems of physical decay, on ignorance, doubt and apathy as well. With each assault, victory draws nearer, the future becomes more assured. In the battle against the menacing sands of yellow rock, part of our Australian heritage is at stake.